Hi everybody and welcome to the Brog. I'm Adam and this is episode number 63. We're one. This is the one year anniversary. It was one year ago, uh, almost to the day. It's, uh, I recorded the first, the pilot webisode on the 28th and of September. And uh, here we are. So we got lots to talk about. And the subject I actually did want to cover was the topic of unity, of being one. Not in the numerical sense, but in the unity sense. So we have a bit of things to talk about. Uh, I'll start off by saying, on the last episode, 62, I mentioned that uh, I have a donate button on my website, adamjosh.com, and usually I don't get donations, nor do I expect them, but I said if I would get any donations that I would use them to increase my gear, my studio equipment here, and uh, my ability to record things for the blog and reinvest it into my set up here and so anyway the first thing that you'll notice is I got a new flat screen monitor and uh, for those of you who haven't seen the old one it's right here sitting on top of the camera so let's go to the very first webisode to have a flashback uh, as it says here uh, it was filmed on the 28th and let's check it out I was laughing because I thought it was funny. <laughs> hey everyone, and uh, welcome to A Job, the uh, Adam Josh oral blog. A Job. So uh, I'm uh, actually this is the first episode of A Job, and I'm just finishing up uh, reading the Quran, a Mansura uh, 99, and it's. Uh, so there we go, and in the first A job, I finished reading the Quran that I was uh, working on reading, and actually, as it stands, I have that right here. And I also have the sweater that I was wearing uh, right here, beside me, behind me. And uh, let's get to it. The good thing about this new monitor is now I can show more video. And uh, I have a video that I wanted to show on it. An update for those of you who remember, I planted uh, light chi seeds. And this is what we got so far. These extra two leaves budding there. And I, light chi from like, it's like an Asian fruit. Uh, it grows, it can grow to be like an, a tree, like seven, eight, nine, ten feet tall. But I've seen one planted in a pot about this big. And I know it's not really the time of year to be trying to start to grow something, but it is what it is, and I'm going to work on uh, growing this. So far, it's doing good. I have another one planted, but it's not doing as good as this one is. And uh, the topic that I wanted to cover today on this one-year anniversary, coincidentally, synchronistically, is the topic of unity, of being one. And we can just get right to it. I ordered uh, David Wilcox's new book, The Source Field Investigations, and I'm pretty excited to get it. I've never ordered anything through Amazon before, so this is the first time. Oh, and last but not least, I wanted to show right over there is where I recorded the first brog, and the only difference being I brought another computer in to the office and uh, I sit here now. I also sit over there, but uh, one of the main reasons I sit here actually, to be perfectly honest, is we have cameras in here and one of them, the main one, isn't pointed at me if I sit here. So not that I have any issue with being on camera, it's just... Um, what I used to do, I would film the camera filming me when I sat over there. It's just, uh, it's, it's not irritating because they, they're, they're CCTV cameras, but it's irritating knowing that somebody at the security company is, or could, be watching it. It's just, I don't, 
you know, whatever. It's good for after hours stuff and for when uh, we have other people in here. And it's uh, more for security. I just don't like when the camera's pointed at me all the time. So personal issues aside, I want to talk about being one and unity in general. So let's uh, have a flashback here and enjoy this new monitor. A flashback to Dr. Cleve Baxter's, not Dr. Wakefield if I did mention that earlier, but Dr. Cleve Baxter's uh, studies with plants. February 2nd, 1966. I've been in the polygraph field full time for 18 years. And this particular morning, I've been working all night in the laboratory and uh, had decided to water a plant in the lab. Very similar to the plant uh, here, Jacina cane plant. My thought was that as the moisture arrived to the leaf of the plant, I should, uh, the plant should be a better conductor. And I should get a reading on the chart. Well, strangely enough, I didn't get this at all. And uh, in fact, it did just the opposite. Instead of, uh, the, instead of tracing, edging upward as it should have on the chart, it uh, went into sort of a wild excitation, very similar to you know, the first part of a human taking a polygraph test. But then it occurred to me, just about 14 minutes along, what would be the real optimum threat to the well-being of a plant. In fact, the imagery of fire entered my mind, and I not only thought, but I fully intended to burn the very leaf that was being tested with a match. Now, I had no matches in the room at the time, and uh, I don't smoke, and I had to go next door to my secretary's area to, to, to get a match. The interesting thing is that right at the split second that that imagery of fire entered my mind, the tracing reflecting the changes in the plant just went right off the top of the page. And the only thing that occurred at that time, no lighting of a match, nothing else, merely the imagery of fire. And I must say that as of 14 minutes along in that initial observation on the morning of February 2nd, 1966, my life just hasn't been the same. Dr. and Mrs. Kenneth Hashimoto, relying on her affinity for plants, Mrs. Hashimoto looks forward to actual conversation with her cactus. Convinced that it possesses an intelligence, she is determined to teach it the Japanese alphabet. <laughs> The plant which is attached to the instrument is able to feel the mutilation of its comrade. Experiment, technicians were asked to pass through a laboratory containing two living cabbage plants. One of the subjects has been instructed to destroy the plant which is not attached to the electronic instrument. Hours later, the technicians are asked to return to the scene of the crime. Evidence is clear. The remaining plant has correctly identified the assailant. During the next six hours, at some undetermined moment, chosen by a randomizer, these brine shrimp will fall to their death in boiling water. In another room, completely separate from his laboratory, Baxter has placed the philodendron plant, a polygraph, and a videotape recorder. Carefully, he places a leaf between a pair of electrodes that will monitor the electrical activity of the plant. For the automation of this experiment to be successful, I have to get a certain distance away from my lab so that my consciousness won't affect the results. I think you get the point by now. 
the the lie detector machine that he has set up to his plant, the Drachnia plant in his office, is registering a signal uh, like that can only be described as like an empathetic signal to the brine shrimp and also when Cleve Baxter had the intent to burn the plant, the uh, plant registered a scream on the lie detector machine and also when lettuce uh, was being chopped up it registered having a, an empathy and uh, with the other plant there's also an experiment with yogurt and uh, they assume that the, when the live bacteria in the yogurt was hitting the stomach or when it was mixing with a preservative in the jam that was also in there it was picking up um, uh, signals so myth, uh, myth, uh, Mythbusters excuse me also uh, tackled uh, talking to plants on one of their episodes and you can see the link in the YouTube video here but uh, I haven't watched that one yet I'm just noticing it now <clears throat> that's pretty interesting stuff I guess that would sort of uh, throw a spanner in the vegans uh, in the vegans works saying well we're we're not eating meat because that's cruelty to animals, but uh, the plant is actually registering uh, pain or registering some sort of electrical activity when it is being uh, sliced and diced. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, Dr. Cleve Baxter's findings are starting to become a little bit more mainstream right now, but back in the day he was sort of sidelined as a kook, I guess, or a, oh, okay, I guess that's interesting, but let's move on. <clears throat> Another thing I wanted to talk about today, uh, while I have your attention, was blank pieces of paper, was oneness. Um, I've had some pretty severe and, and uh, powerful and wild revelations uh, lately and I'm very thankful for them and some of them are hard to put into words and uh, I would like to share it anyway. I mean I could, I, I started, I was tweeting some of the things that uh, were sort of hitting me. Maybe what I'll do is... <laughs> I'll read my own tweets to you and elaborate them on elaborate on them a little bit more. Bear with me just one moment, please. How are you doing? So I got a new monitor thanks to a uh, a listener's, a friend's, a fan's, whatever you want to call the beautiful people who care about me and this information. So the next thing on my list would be to get a more powerful, more up-to-date computer. <clears throat> why things don't take uh, take a little bit uh, longer than they should sometimes but so I wrote uh, if singularity can be defined as life or consciousness then it stands to reason that I am the only one here I am and I also wrote close your eyes and think I am alive this is all in here everything I know is in my head including my head I am experiencing me 
and uh, it's a lot to take in, a lot to explain, and a lot easier to uh, explain in a meditative state, which I'm not really in right now, but uh, I mean, what I was trying to say is that if life If the singularity that is at the center structure, at the creation of everything, if if that singularity is resulting in life, I mean, you are alive. You know, your physical heart is beating, your, your brain is, is moving, you have electric, uh, measurable electric signals going through your brain and, and uh, through your hands and all that. So you are alive. Now, if singularity can be defined as that life or as that consciousness, then it stands to reason that I am the only one here. Um, I mean, when you close your eyes and most people, when they're laying down on, in bed, they can have these thoughts and it may become a little bit more clear, but everything that we interpret as, interpret as outside is actually not outside anywhere at all. It's actually, like Morpheus says in the Matrix, elect electrical uh, signals interpreted by our brains. And of course, that line wasn't written by Lawrence Fishburne. It was written by somebody else and blah, blah, blah. But um, everything that you know and everything that it that you think is outside of you actually exists in your mind including your mind the physical the apparently physical structure of your body actually also exists in your mind whatever your spirit or mind is all your ideas about god and all your ideas about your friends and family all those exist inside that singularity, the awareness. So I guess that's one of the reasons why people personify and personalize their deity. You hear, you hear uh, my God in a box or, you know, my, <laughs> my deity in my pocket and uh, but that's a whole other subject, but another thought that I had was if that singularity, the creative force or that singular, the singular uh, the singular entity awareness point, the consciousness, the the center energy of everything. If that, if you wanted to find it, define it as a entity or as a divine being, the source field, if that being decided to imagine <clears throat> or create all of everything that you see around you and everything that you know and then everything that we don't know if that entity decided to do that then the entity is basically deciding to experience this reality through all of us for whatever purposes that entity wanted to like a thousand points of one light but all still the light this is where people get into those ideas of you know we are divine beings and uh, some people have gone so far as to say I am God or I am um, the creator which is a, 
to me a little bit far-fetched but um, if the singularity and if the singularity can be defined as life then it does stand to reason because you are alive that you share you definitely are sharing in that thought or sharing in that state that uh, you are in that sense divine another way of looking at it I thought as a sort of a poor illustration but keeping in mind <clears throat> they also did uh, Cleve Baxter's experiments with uh, white cells skin cells out of your cheek and they isolated the white cells and then hook up, hooked up electrodes to those cells and then uh, got uh, one of his lab partners to flip through some magazines and talk about some controversial subjects and he noticed that the uh, white cells that were being monitored were also registering the uh, changes and uh, notable, notable changes as uh, they were talking about specific subjects or things that got uh, the, the person excited. Also, there's been experiments done where two people or friends get a chance to uh, sit and communicate for a while. And then uh, pupil dilation is one thing that they measured and in brain activity. And then they would separate these people by massive distances and then have uh, sort of like input or like flashing lights or images on the one person and then they would measure the other person's reactions and the, the brain uh, functions and brain activity of the other person and they still were connected in that sense like it, it was like the other person was there with them so there's this instantaneous source field connectivity as proven by Cleve Baxter and uh, like the ancient uh, native Indians and shamans believe and there is science to it as Cleve Baxter uh, is trying to show and uh, there's a spiritual side to it I guess too as uh, David Wilcock talks about and uh, I'm not gonna go so far as to to uh, to validate any particular religion with these findings but uh, here's another example so I've cut this piece of paper, which was originally one sheet of paper, and now it's several small sheets of paper, which I am organizing so I can show you on camera sort of what I'm doing here. Now, I've cut this piece of paper up into however many pieces. Not a thousand points of light, but this many. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pieces. Now, these pieces of paper were all one, right? At one point, they were one, and now they're nine pieces of paper that are experiencing individuality. Uh, all from the same oneness and if I had the time and proper technology technology I could probably reassemble these back together um, I could and you say oh Adam that's impossible is it because that's what recycling is <laughs> we I could uh, uh, recycle these back into pulp and make another sheet of paper, right? I could technically. So keeping all this in mind, we perceive ourselves as individual, but we share a consciousness. When I wrote, when I tweeted, if singularity can be defined as life or consciousness, then it stands to reason that I am the only one here. I am. And then one of my friends tweeted me back, yes, you are. And that's not what I meant. Uh, I mean, she might have been trying to be funny, but... The consciousness is uh, is sort of like an ever, an ever I am. 
uh, aware. I am this creative consciousness. So instead of her saying you are, it would have been more proper to say yes, I am. And that's what pe people look for, that singularity. Uh, the singularity being uh, the I am, the source field, the thing where, where matter and energy and all that uh, originate from. And now I've cut up a whole bunch of pieces of paper. And I wonder if I had Cleve Baxter's equipment here, <laughs> would these uh, plants around have measured uh, have measured a scream on the on the lie detector when I was cutting up the paper, I don't know. So if you believe in if you want to talk in religious terms for a second, if you want to believe in uh, a creator, an entity, um, a god, then we are the creation of that god, and by extension, or by implication, we are part of that god. We are that God experiencing creation and life through ourselves, acquiring and gathering information to then go back to that entity's collective mind. I mean, I was sitting there thinking like, I am the only one here. All my life and all my friends and family were dissolving in my mind and in my spiritual journey were dissolving and what's left after your friends and family and all your ideas about God, all your ideas about heaven, all your ideas about the afterlife or reincarnation or whatever, all those ideas are in your mind. They're in the sense that you can say, well, somebody put them there, but even that somebody was still in your mind. Everything that you know is in your mind. You know what I mean? We learn things, uh, and memory is a tricky thing as well. Time, past, present, and future is also a tricky thing. Uh, we learn all these things and we acquire this knowledge but it's all at, it's all in our minds and in our awareness now when that reality around you your friends your family your own physical body dissolves what are you left with there's some people that would say well you cease we are lifeless products of trillions or billions of years of evolution from nothing out of nowhere and uh, uh, we came from lifeless rocks that don't have atoms that aren't filled with energy that are made of that aren't made of particles that are just brick and mortar and all this brick and mortar eventually collided and formed into the um, Mount Rushmore and then somehow depicted uh, the faces of the people and the people of the faces and made each other and now we have zebras and giraffes and dinosaurs and birds and high-speed internet and all that just came at a single-celled organisms from nothing out of nowhere that evolved over millions of years or billions of years. There's people that think that so when your physical body dissolves or in the real sense decomposes back into the ground into the into the back into the ether you're recycled in that sense that uh, your life ceases but I don't agree with that and it's not the pattern that we see the lychee plant the lychee seed that I ate I planted that seed and now I have grown a tree from it so I've, we've seen a pretty clear example of holographic infinites right here. 
and two people I was thinking about attraction as well and I know I know I'm sounding like a hippie right now and and you'll just have to bear with me because <laughs> I'm trying to say something about oneness on this one year anniversary two people when they're attracted to each other they have that interlocking connection they they feel that oneness together so much so that they get closer and closer to the point where they're actually trading bodily fluids to the point where the oneness comes down to a singularity and then expands again and nine months later gives birth to a bouncing baby boy or girl which will carry on the species like a plant. I think we're a lot more complex and intricate than plants. No offense, plant. I'm just saying that because they're watching. But, um, you see my point. The base of all this experience and all that is some intention and purpose of this awareness and source field energy singularity experiencing itself and all our ideas about faith and God and what's out there are all in our minds are all in consciousness and as we search for things we keep finding more as we search for detail we find more detail we see the holographic golden mean patterns in all of creation. I mean, this is a pine cone, right? But this pattern of creation is found everywhere. In flowers and roses. And when we see it in architecture, we define that as beauty. So we all share this common holographic golden mean idea of beauty and what else did I want to say that about covers it so I guess this is sort of an encouraging Adam Josh Oral Brog to know that Some people feel alone, but uh, if that thought uh, scares you, or being alone scares you, then uh, you're not alone in that sense. And if life or consciousness is the source field and is the singularity, at the, at the center point of all creation and matter, then the question, is there life out there in the universe, is an axiomatic, self-evident, self-answering question. The answer is yes. Life and consciousness is everywhere that we are going to look. Not only that, but rocks, inorganic, or matter is made of atoms that are made of energy, right? Even these scissors are made of atoms and uh, the atoms are energy condensed to a low vibration. So technically you could say that these scissors are have energy in them, which they do, so they're, if you consider energy alive or energy as a form of life, then even inorganic rocks or what we would call lifeless objects are actually alive. And uh, so in that same definition, life is everywhere. Life is, the universe is teeming and full of life. And that's encouraging. You're not alone. There's life everywhere. There's life all around us. You're breathing in and exhaling life. I mean, water is full of life, right? I'm drinking a glass of H2 only, which is full of life. 
I'm breathing air, which is full of life. And I'm not a hippie. It may sound pretty hippie-ish, but I'm not a hippie. Let's give this uh, plant some water while we're here. One day, I hope to eat the lychee fruit off of this plant. I don't know how long that'll take, but probably a while. So thank you, everybody who stuck around for the last year and has seen all these 63 episodes of the Adam Josh Oral Brog. And I'm looking forward to as many more as I can record. Um, I might change the title or start calling it The Brog instead. Um, I don't have any sort of uh, reason behind putting my name on it other than so people can find it really but uh, it's not actually terribly important to me that my name be on everything that I do I guess it's just sort of a default I mean I am Adam Josh and this is the brog brog being a better word of the past tense and past tense of the past tense of the past tense of brag I just don't like the word blog so I call it uh, the brog Blog sounds, I don't know, it sounds like either a piece of wood or a piece of poop. The blog, the B log, the what, the, bi the biblical log, the binary log. I understand vlog because that's like video log, right? But what does blog mean? The, shouldn't it be? Like W log, the W log, the written log, or the write log, the type log, or the clog. Clog would make more sense. Anyway, so this has been uh, our little spiritual hippie journey through uh, singularity, oneness, consciousness, the underlying source field. And uh, to those of you uh, who don't know anything about David Wilcock, I would recommend going to divinecosmos.com. That's divinecosmos.com. If I was editing this, I could edit it in right here later. Divinecosmos.com. But uh, since I'm not editing it, divine. This is how we do links on uh, unedited links on the Adam Josh Oral Brog. Everybody, check out divinecosmos.com. And uh, of course, my website is adamjosh.com, just as it sounds, A-D-A-M-J-O-S-H.com. Please be aware that your awesomeness has increased by 23% simply by watching this video and also by going to adamjosh.com. And hey, let's do a little experiment uh, in this uh, awareness, consciousness, source field that underlines underlies between plants and uh, people. Let's let's do a little experiment here. I'm I've been invited to a wedding and uh, here's the wedding invitation and I think I've mentioned before that um, I have family in the Navy this is the wedding invitation, anyway. And I'm not going to say his name because he probably doesn't agree with everything that I say or how crazy I am. But uh, one of my cousins is uh, getting married and has invited me to the wedding. And it's sort of out there in uh, near, near Chicago. And uh, now I... I guess the experiment that we could do would be that I would ask that those of you who are watching, those of you who are watching would send me those vibes of everything going well and uh, me being able to get there and the trip properly and uh, everything goes well and uh, I have a good idea as to what to uh, bring and uh, if I bring a guest uh, that that guest and I will be able to travel properly and we'll be able to uh, everything will go smoothly 
we could you could send me those vibes or send me those thoughts or send those intentions to me and uh, I'll meet up with you and report back on uh, a job It'll probably be in the 70s maybe by then uh, the weddings in uh, November so I could tell you how that went and do a report so I ask that you send me good vibes and vibes of success and not vibes and intentions of burning my leaves <laughs> unless you're one of those weird people that like to see other people suffer but uh, I send you whoever's watching this good vibes of prosperity and love and true happiness and contentment and success in every area of your life and uh, I ask in, in the same that uh, you do the same for me you know my face and you know my name and if you think about those two things sending them good sending those good vibes to that face and name then we'll see what that does I think I'm a little bit more advanced than a plant no offense guys but uh, we'll see. So I'd, I'd encourage you guys to check out uh, DivineCosmos.com and also check out this Cleve Baxter stuff. I, I've ordered the book, like I said, the Source Field Investigations from Amazon and uh, we'll see how that goes. And uh, that's about it. That's all I have to say. So thank you for watching the one year anniversary of the Adam Josh Roll Brog. This is episode 63. We are one. Take care. Tell your friends to get a job.